Everyone, welcome back to me, YouTube channel. This is your one and only EQD Vlogs, your one and only English grammar teacher in Leyte Province, Philippines, giving you a weekly dose of English grammar lessons. Now, everyone, let's concentrate on the lesson 37 entitled Verb Tenses. So, without further ado, let us start. Hold up. Now, the verb of a sentence gives information about the tense of the verb. Speakers of English generally are aware that, for example, the verb studies is in the present tense of the verb. Meanwhile, the verb studied is in the past tense of the verb. Get me? Get me? Very good. It's important to understand that grammatical tense and real-world time are not necessarily the same. Take a look at the following sentences in your screens. So look at the screen. Sentence 1. She studied yesterday. In sentence 1, there is an underlined word and the word being underlined is the word studied notice that one now let's move to sentence number two she was studying yesterday now the underlined word in sentence two obviously is the word was in sentences one and two that you have read the tense of the underlined verbs as seen in their forms is in past tense. The time that is being talked about is also in, is in the past tense. So in these cases, tense and time are the same. The time in the sentences that I've read is the adverb of time that's yesterday. Clear with that? Forgot that part? Now consider also sentences 3 and 4 that I'm going to flash on your screens. Look at your screens. Sentence 3. I am going to France next summer. Note that there's an underlined word in sentence number 3 and the word being underlined is the word am. Um. Sentence number 4. She has bought the books for the course. Again, sentence number four. She has bought the books for the course. Again, there is an underlined word in sentence number four. And the word being underlined is the word has. In sentences three and four. The grammatical tense of the underlined verbs is in present form of the verb. Clear tayo dyan? Present yes, form, daddy. sentence 3, the verb is am, um, is in present form. And sentence 4, the verb is has, it's in present form. Because take note that the past tense of the verb am um, is was. Meanwhile, the past tense of the verb has is the verb had. Claro to had. Very good. However, the real life or actual time that sentence 3 is talking about is the future. The actual time that sentence 4 is talking about is in the past tense of the verb. So in sentences 3 and 4, we can see that grammatical tense and real lifetime are not always the same. For the rest of these lessons, take note that there is a rule in English grammar and the rule is Quick Tip 37.1. Now what is the rule Quick Tip 37.1? It will tell you that time refers to a point in real life at which 
something occurs. Tense refers to the grammatical form of the verb. Are we clear with that? Again, quick tip 37.1 in English grammar. Time refers to a point in life at which something occurs. Example, today, yesterday, next month, next year. That's what we call as time or adverb of time. Claro tadi ha. Meanwhile, tense of the verb refers to the grammatical form of a verb. Diba? Study is present tense. Studied is in the past tense. To make the a word study, which is in present tense, be in the past tense, diba? change Y to I and add ED. Study, studied. Are we clear? In a simple sentence, tense information is carried by only one verb. Verb. Claro ta? If a sentence has helping verbs as well as a main verb, which verb shows tense of the verb? In each of the sentences, in your screens, look at your screens, the verb that carries the tense information is being underlined. Take note, I'm going to read sentences 5 to 12. Let us start. Sentence 5. John studies. In sentence 5, there's an underlined word and the word being underlined is the word studies. Sentence 6. John studied. In sentence 6, is a word being underlined and the word being underlined is the word studied. Now, let us compare sentences 5 and 6. The verb studies is in the present tense, as you can read in sentence 5. Meanwhile, the verb studied in number 6 is in the past tense. So, present tense, studies, past tense, studied, as presented difference of sentences 5 and 6. Now let's move to sentences 7 and 8. Are we clear? John has studied. That's the sentence 7. Take note also that there's an underlined word being underlined in sentence 7 and the word being underlined is the word had. Sentence 8. John had studied. Also, this word being underlined in sentence 8 and the word being underlined in sentence 8 is the word head. Present tense has. Past tense had. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Comparing sentence 7 and 8. Sentence 7 is showing you present tense has and sentence 8 past tense of the word has which is head let's move to sentences 9 and 10 sentence 9 will tell you that john is studying there's underlined word in sentence 9 and the word being underlined in sentence 9 is the word is sentence 10 john was studying there's also underlined word in the sentence number 10 and the word being underlined in sentence number 10 is the word was or was so the difference between uh the word is in sentence 9 and the word was in sentence 10 is is in the present tense of the verb was is the past tense of the word is so is present tense was past tense claro ta wala naglibog maglibog pa ka diha lotang jukan ta now let's move to sentence 11 and 12 Sentence 11 stated as, John has been studying. Sentence 12, John had been studying. The underlined word in sentence 11 is the word has. Meanwhile, the underlined word in sentence 12 is the word had. Now, what's the difference between the word has and the word had? 
The word has is in the present tense. Meanwhile, the word had is the past tense of the word has. So, present tense, has, past tense, had. Are we clear? Claro. Present tense, has. May include past tense, had. Claro. Kung maglibo po d'yo kanihang bata ka, lotang d'yo ka ka. Claro. Oh, no! Hindi siya pwede kay bullying na siya kung iba inaw ng learner ka na. So, bada siya. Bata. Remember, you can see that in each sentence, it is the very first verb that carries the tense information, regardless of whether it's a helping verb or simply the word being underlined is actually the main verb. You will notice that we have not included in our last sentences, the sentences 5, until 12, examples of sentences whose first verb is a modal. Kasi nakalimot na sad mo sa modal. Klaro nga ha? Recall from lesson 34 that modals always comes first in sentences with more than one verb. Again, our lesson about modals, that's lesson 34, will tell you that modals always come first in sentences with more than one verb. Huwag nakalimot ka sa gaana. Inyo na dyan nakalimot. Klaro na kami. Nga man, that is because in general, modals do not carry clear tense and phonetic. Oh no! Look at the following examples. I'm going to give you example sentences 13, 14, and sentence 15. Klaro tadi ha? Pwede ta magbilis siya. Pwede sa ta mag-English o pinas siya. Let's move to looking at sentences 13, 14, and 15. Sentence 13. I might do it right now. Or, I might do it today. Sentence 14. I might do it tomorrow. Sentence 15. I might have done it yesterday. Now, there are words again being underlined in the sentences 13, 14, and 15. The word being underlined in sentence 13 is the word might. Meanwhile, in sentence 14, the word being underlined is the word might. Ba? Claro ta. Also, the word being underlined in sentence 15 is the word might. In short, might, might, might ang mga words ang underline the sentence 13, sentence 14, and sentence 15. Take note, as you can see, the form of the modal is the same might regardless of whether it refers to time in present, that's sentence 13, time in the future, presented by sentence 14, or time in the past tense, presented by sentence 15. Claro ta? Again, sentence 13 is providing you time in the present. Sentence 14 is providing you time in the future, and sentence 15 is providing you time diba? in the past tense of the sentence. Last thing to remember in a lesson today is quick tip 37.2. What is it going to tell you? Quick tip 37.2 in English grammar will tell you that tense information is always indicated by the first verb in the sentence excluding modals. Claro ta? Balik. English grammar quick tip 37.2 Tense information is always indicated by the first verb in the sentence excluding the modals embedded in the sentence. 
this is getting your one and only English teacher providing you weekly grammar lessons only here from Lady Province, Philippines. Your number one. Bye, you see me.